Hi everyone! Now that we've had a look on all the different scientific sides of deep sea mining, we proceed to the social sides, or more so, the legal status of the deep sea floor. Who controls the deep sea mining? It's not like on land where states can decide where and how they mine, or is it? Are there any laws or public bodies who control deep sea mining? You will see. Since humankind has been traveling the oceans for thousands of years, the oceans have long been a subject to some kind of regulations. In the 17th century, in times of international trading between the colonizers and colonial states, new sea routes and other developments, the first public law of the sea was established. It was called the Freedom of the Seas Doctrine, or Mare Liberum. This doctrine declared the seas as international territory, free for all, and states only had jurisdiction over a narrow belt surrounding their coastline. But barely 100 years ago, some nations came to express their concerns over the exploitation of mineral resources or coastal fish stocks, as well as the threat of pollution and waste from transport vessels and oil tankers. Some conferences were held, but nothing specific happened until the mid of the 20th century. Technological developments expanded the nautical range in which countries could detect and exploit natural resources. So finally, the president of the USA, Truman, extended in 1945 the US American Oceanic jurisdiction to all the natural resources of its continental shelf, well beyond the coastal waters of the country. Following that, in 1956, the United Nations held its first conference on the law of the sea, which resulted in four treaties two years later. Following the first UNCLOS, two further conferences were held. The last one came to conclusion in 1982 and resulted in the UN Convention of the Law of the Sea, also known as the Law of the Sea Treaty, which defines the rights and responsibilities of nations in their use of the world's oceans. This convention came into force 1994 replacing the four original treaties and has to date been officially approved by 168 states. Due to the promises of polymetallic nodule exploitation, the deep seabed was proposed to be a common heritage of mankind. This led to the establishment of the International Seabed Authority, with the responsibility to organize and control deep sea mining in international seabed areas. The first achievement of this intergovernmental organization in 2000 was the adoption of regulations for prospecting and exploration for polymetallic nodules, with special provisions to protect the marine environment from any adverse effects. The authority followed this up by signing 15-year exploration contracts with seven private and public entities. The international law of the sea precisely regulates who can explore where on the deep sea floor. So, starting from the shore of a coastal state, this state has sole sovereignty just like on land and its internal waters, over a zone of about 12 sea miles, or 22 kilometers. This is the so-called territorial sea, and the state sovereignty extends to the airspace above the sea, as well as to its seabed and subsoil. Here, the coastal state applies its own rules. After these 12 nautical miles, the contiguous zone starts. Here, the state still has limited control, and can still limitedly sanction breaches of its laws. Then follows the EEZ. The EEZ is defined by the UNCLOS as the Z-zone over which a state has special rights regarding the exploration and exploitation of marine resources on the seabed and subsoil, and it includes the contiguous zone. The EEZ stretches out to 200 nautical miles, or 370 kilometers, and regulates the rights of a nation below the sea. However, the surface waters in the EEZ are already open to passage and the coastal state can't prohibit passage anymore like in the territorial waters. Following the EEZ lie the international waters, on and below the surface. The resources in the international seabed area do therefore not belong to individual states, but are defined as the common heritage of mankind and their benefits are to be shared equitably according to UNCLOS. Here it lies in the hand of the ISA to regulate the usage of the deep sea floor. It should ensure that the benefits from deep sea mining are shared between rich and developing countries and not only gained by those who can buy a mining license. 
If a state wishes to extract marine minerals for scientific or soon economic purposes from the international seabed area, it can apply for an exploration license. So, now that you've seen that the legal status of the deep sea floor is not so easily understood, you can investigate further with the links and information in the description box below. And if you have any questions, just type them in the comments. In the next episode, I will interview Professor Mans Lück, an expert for international sea law, and we will talk about recent developments in the legal status of the deep sea floor and the exploitation of deep sea resources. So stay tuned and see you in the next episode.